Welcome to the second episode of our forest management series. In our previous segment, we introduced you to the two different forest types that are managed by Roseburg. The mountainous Douglas fir forests of Oregon and the lowland pine forests of North Carolina and Virginia are vastly different, but they're both managed sustainably by our excellent team of foresters. In today's video, we will tell you all about the first steps in the forest management cycle, seedling production and planting. Sarah, Pete, and Jerry are going to help explain how trees are planted in our different forest types. My name is Sarah Lippo. I'm a forest geneticist and I work out of Roseburg's Lebanon Seed Orchard. Foresters plant seedlings, baby trees that are about six to 24 inches tall. But to do this, they first need to obtain the seed to grow into the seedlings. Our goal is to obtain the seed from trees that are well adapted to the environments that they'll be planted in, resilient to pests and pathogens, and that contain other desirable traits like fast growth and straight stems. So how do we actually get the seed? We get it by grafting trees that have been identified as having desirable traits into seed orchards. Seed orchards contain groups of trees that are managed to produce cones containing seeds. Seed orchards look more like fruit or nut orchards than like typical forest stands. Nearly all the Douglas fir and loblolly pine trees that Roseburg plants are the result of genetic testing, and the result is better survival, faster growth, and more resiliency to environmental stresses. Once the seeds are removed from the cones produced at a seed orchard, they can be shipped to nurseries where they're grown into seedlings. This takes advanced planning. Most Douglas fir trees that Roseburg plants are grown in the nursery for two seasons. For loblolly pine, we contract with nurseries to grow both the seed and the seedlings. Though through research cooperatives, we still contribute to genetic selection and testing of trees with desirable traits. At Roseburg, we replant after every harvest and we plant more trees than we remove. In a typical year, we plant approximately six million seedlings, planting done within two years of harvest. We also replant after forest fires. The goal is to get seedlings in the ground as soon as possible so that they can start to grow into a new forest. I'm Jerry Risk. I'm a forester in the Diller District and I work out of the Western Regional Office. In Oregon, we sometimes plant a mix of species. The primary species is Douglas fir, but we also plant species like redwood, cedar, and grand fir in areas where the site conditions are not optimal for Douglas fir. The steep terrain here requires a more hands-on approach to planting. Crews of about 12 to 15 people fill bags with seedlings and hike across the site, planting each seedling by hand. They use a specifically designed shovel to make a wedge in the soil. They then drop the seedling in, remove the shovel, and use their foot to gently press the soil back into place around the tree. This is backbreaking work and can be slow going. A crew can cover 20 to 25 acres in a day. Tree planters deserve a lot of credit for the important work that they do. Hi, I'm Pete Hancock, the Roanoke Timberlands Manager for Roseburg. I lead our team of resource professionals that operate our property in Virginia and North Carolina. In our Roanoke Timberlands, we plant predominantly loblolly pine. Loblolly pine is the primary choice over other pines due to its ability to be successfully planted across a variety of soils and sites, its aggressive growth rates, and wood quality characteristics. The seedlings that are planted are between 6 and 10 inches above the ground line and can grow at a rate of about 7 tons per acre per year. The reforestation process is the most thoroughly planned and analyzed activity within our cycle of forest management. Specific seedling types based on provenance and genetic traits are assigned to a site factoring in latitude, soil type, and hydrology. We utilize contractors that manually plant over 100 acres in a day with hand tools. Our planting season is in the winter months, usually January and February. Trees are naturally in a dormant state in the winter, so they are not actively growing. Planting in this season allows the seedlings time to establish our root systems before the growing season starts in spring. Also, to protect during lifting from nursery beds, packing, and transplanting so they can resume growing in their new location. When you see a recently planted site, you might not think it's all that impressive with those tiny seedlings. But foresters, planting crews, and geneticists do a lot of work to get those young trees in the ground. Now, the trees take over the responsibility of growing a new forest. Thank you for joining us on this step of the forest management cycle. Next time, we'll talk about what comes next for these young trees and early stand management.